Battlefield 1, often considered in many circles and in my humble opinion, the best Battlefield ever made, or FPS game for that matter, but why? What made this Battlefield so amazingly good to play and makes it stand out compared to the others, and the other FPS games of its time? Releasing in 2016 in a flooded market of futuristic warfare type games, that felt year in and year out like copy and paste games, and the gamers needed a new type of game, so DICE went with the unexpected and chose an era of warfare not touched, or at least not at a AAA level. And when you drop the best trailer ever made and it gets people talking about the game and interested in it, As of today, it has 71 million views on YouTube and a comment section praising the game and the trailer. The era of Battlefield 1 is set in World War 1, often not touched on by modern adaptations of FPS games, either because it is believed that there is no audience that cares for such a time period or that the weapons of World War 1 are slow to use, as in fire rate and damage dealt. You see most weapons used in World War 1 were bolt action weapons and not automated weapons of the day. Disclaimer, yes, I know there are automatic weapons in the game. Don't shit on me in the comment section. I'm trying to prove a point. These automatic weapons cause the game to move fast and take out a lot of enemies at once. So what happens when you make a game focused on a one-shot weapon then recharge weapon system like Battlefield 1? It creates an atmosphere that hasn't been touched in modern day FPS games, causing the game to stand out in a sea of over copy and paste games of futuristic warfare. And when you put a game that has no real competitors, make it feel new, give it a balanced weapon system, vehicles, and an incredibly realistic and immersive atmosphere, you get Battlefield 1. Game modes can make or break a game's multiplayer aspect, if done bad or in this case, amazingly well. It allows the multiplayer portion of the game to really stand out. Having game modes like Air Assault, Conquest Assault, Supply Drop, Front Lines, Conquest, Domination, Rush, War Pigeons, Team Deathmatch, but to me what made Battlefield 1's multiplayer stand out was a new kind of multiplayer. One thing that Battlefield often gets wrong is the size of their maps, often making them too large that they feel empty to the player even if there is 64 players on the map. So how did DICE fix this problem? By implementing a historical multi-map game mode called Operations. Instead of forcing 64 players to fight across a large portion of the map, they were forced to play in a small area until the objective was lost, so often it felt like you were fighting more than 32 players on the other team. Having the defending team hold small objectives on the map, often only 20 to 30 percent of the size of the map making the odds of you running into an enemy player very high and in some cases almost impossible to not have one on your screen at all times. Operations is set on real historical battles taken across World War I, giving us background on the war and also allowing us to fight in most theaters of the war. Instead of a random map in the middle of nowhere that has no meaning or consequences if we win or lose the battle. Before the battle starts we are given the consequences if we win or lose the battle and what it means for our side the of the US war. The US Army's attack along the River Meuse would be the first time most of these so-called doughboys had witnessed real combat. Though this assault came as a surprise to the Central Powers, the German Army was an experienced elite force ready for anything. We stand victorious, they are beaten. You are all heroes rushed into this fight and broke the resistance of this brutal foe. But it's only the beginning. Now we must move to the Argonne Forest and finish this war once and for all. The Germans were using defense in depth tactics designed to lure the enemy towards much stronger rear defenses. The victorious Doughboys marched into the Argonne Forest, unaware of the deadly defenses awaiting them ahead. And at the end of the battle, a narrator tells us of the consequences of the battle, and what is to come, or what could have happened if the battle went the way it did in our match. But don't let that shame burn you up inside. You fought with the spirit of liberty for democracy, and President Wilson salutes you. God help us. Nice work, boys. With the French victorious too, the whole German line is collapsing. They'll be surrendering by nightfall. We did what we came to do. Let's pray this is the war to end all wars. 
The success of the Muse Argonne offensive came at a high price and remains to this date the bloodiest battle in American history. This outcome broke the German army, leading to an armistice and peace with the Allies nation dictating terms. In operations, the attacking team has tickets or lives. If the defending team took all of the attacking team's tickets without losing the objective, they would win the game. Or to be pushed off of the objective, and then they have to defend another. But if the assault fails, the attackers are given another attempt to take the objective, often given a behemoth. Which was another new implication into the FPS genre, giving a team either a battleship, a blimp, an armored train, or a super heavy tank in the DLC. To help them attack the defender's objective, which could prove useful and if used correctly could win the attackers the game. Causing the battlefield to move constantly with the relentless pushing and all out assault on the objective over the small portion of the map. And when the defenders failed and the attackers succeeded, it pushed the defenders to hold a new objective into new areas of the map not yet touched by the war. And this is where atmosphere comes into play. When you spawn in there is silence, an uneasy silence, one that is broken by a whistle and then men screaming going over the top to then be drowned out by the unrelentless hail of bullets and explosions for the rest of the game. The longer the round goes on and the more destruction becomes clear in the map. With bodies, dirt, and other such debris relentlessly raining from above or next to you. The purring of a tank as you follow behind it for cover. To now a plane dropping a load of bombs over your head. Or swooping above you attempting to shoot down an enemy plane. To the random ragdoll flying across the trenches. But in the beginning, it is easy to miss the already war-torn parts of the map getting worse. Artillery craters getting bigger, bunkers begin to crack and trenches fall into disrepair, lined with the bodies of fallen comrades, who have failed to reach the objective, being picked off by snipers hidden in the trenches. But once the first objectives are taken and the second part of the map is opened up, it becomes clear to the player that this part of the map is untouched by the war, and the longer the war rages on, the more of this part of the map becomes destroyed and unrecognizable. Cities and towns completely torn apart, and entire countrysides burned and destroyed. And then the first time you see the behemoth fall from the sky and change the landscape of the map as a whole. This is how to do immersion. This is how to get players into the game, something that not many games can do properly nowadays. Then you mix in properly balanced weapons and vehicles with kits laid across the map to add a dynamic change of pace and to overpower a player that can easily lead to another objective being taken using one of these kits. Make maps that aren't only a three-way attack like other FPS games. <coughs> Throw in a squad class system to add a dynamic to the team you are rolling with. And not to brag, but your boy was the best medic in every game. No flex or anything, just thought you should know. And you can easily see why Battlefield 1 is the best Battlefield ever made, and arguably the best FPS game ever made too. It's a shame that we can't go back and play it because most of the servers are mostly dead. But what I'd give to go back and play it when it was at its peak, to sit there with all of my old friends and be immersed once more in the war to end all wars.